Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber. I'm so excited to welcome you back for another episode. This podcast is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. So for today's episode, it is called Why Being Disliked Can Be Your Superpower. And I love this title and the direction of this episode, because I think there's just something that comes with a human experience where you're going to be disliked. (laughs) There's, there's millions of people on this planet and not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone's going to like your energy. Not everyone is going to like what you stand for. And quite frankly, being disliked is one of the things I hated growing up. I felt like I was constantly in a position in which I'm finding out that someone doesn't like me and it hurts. <laughs> it, it hurts, especially in my twenties and even in high school. And, you know, we can take it all the way back to when we're kids and you just like find out that that one person that you think is so cool, doesn't like you. And suddenly your day is ruined because you're like, what did I, what did I do? Um, I'm a big believer where I'm okay with the person disliking me when they have a reason. There is something about someone not liking me with absolutely no reason behind it that has been what I truly struggle with. Because it's like, well, hold on now. I don't talk to you, mean you haven't had a conversation, we don't hang out, uh, you don't follow me on social media, I don't follow you on social media, I don't talk about religion, I don't talk about politics. Like, what could possibly be the reason why you don't like me? And I would always try to find the reason to help me justify them not liking me and therefore I felt better because I knew the reasoning behind it. But now I've gotten to an age, and it might be because I'm going to be 35 this year in December. So I've got a little bit, of, I've got a little bit of time to go, but I feel like I'm reaching that 40s time frame where you really don't care. And that's what people always have told me, individuals that are in their 40s and 50s. They always say once you reach 40, it's a whole nother world because you really don't care. <laughs> you have gotten to an age where you really stop caring completely. I'm heading in that direction, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm heading towards, I'm about probably 60, 70% there of really not caring. And then I've got about 30, 40% that I'm still trying to get together. But for the most part, I genuinely don't care. And what has helped me is realizing the fact that some people will have no reason to not like you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do to change their minds. And one thing I hated about winning Miss USA at 26 versus man, if I had won it right now at 34, 26, I was so focused on validation and seeking approval from other people. I was in a pageantry space where you just don't see a lot of women when that one look like me to have my background. So kind of being the first in a few categories with this crown, I wanted this community to accept me. So I would go out of my way to not be myself in hopes that the more I'm what they think, the more I'm what I think they want me to be, the more they will like me. And what I discovered is that there's nothing that I can do for them to like me. They don't like who I am. They don't like who I stand for or what I stand for. They don't like the way that I look. They don't like me. And there's absolutely nothing I can do about that. And it's a tough pill to swallow. And at 26, I really struggled to swallow that pill. At 34, I would have handled it 10 times better than I did eight years ago. 
because now I just don't care. <laughs> now y'all can like me or y'all can not like me, but spending an entire year fighting to get people to like you is just such a waste of time and is definitely a waste of energy. So it's a strange feeling when you know that in your past, you've given a community of people that you don't know, many of them you will never meet, so much power over your joy. And that's what being affected by other people's dislike or disapproval for you does to you. You're now giving them control over your joy. And it's interesting because in the midst of being disliked, I was so loved by others and their love was not enough to sustain my joy. The dislike of this community or this pocket of individuals outweighed the love that I did get. So although I'm looking at all these people the night that I got crowned, like I'm looking at a hundred people bash me in the comments. There's about 500 that are one, so happy for me and proud of me. And two are fighting the other people in the comments over their negative comments about me. So it's really just a system of go where you're loved go where you're celebrated, go where you're appreciated. And I've talked about it in dating. And I think why being disliked can be your superpower is because you embrace the people that do like you, right? That's why it's a superpower because you're not so focused on the people that dislike you and you're focused on the people that do like you. And therefore you are reallocating that energy somewhere else where it's more appreciated. So it's the same with dating. I no longer care about men that don't find me attractive or men that don't think that I'm their type. Men that are not attracted to women that look like me, whether it be the fact that I'm dark skinned, whether the fact that I have Afrocentric features, the fact that my body is very slim, um, what, whatever the reason may be, the fact that I'm taller, I'm a little lanky, whatever the case may be, I have more of an athletic body, whatever the reason why these group of men or this pocket of men don't like me, my energy is not there. My energy is the men that do love me, the men that do appreciate me, the men that do celebrate my beauty. Those are the men that I now am allowing my energy to be focused on dating men like that. So the same thing goes for any pocket of community that you step into, whether it's professional or personal. And I'll tell you all a little bit more right after this break. Okay, welcome back from the break. So diving more into why being disliked is a superpower. It's so much easier to find your tribe, to find your community, to find the place that you're meant to be when you know where you're not wanted. <laughs> and I know that that sounds kind of bad, where it's like, I know I'm supposed to be over here because they don't like me over here. I know that that sounds like a very negative thing, but I think it is a clarity thing. And sometimes it's not that we need, it's not that we need anything to definitive, definitively tell us where we're not wanted. I think we just need clarity on where we're wanted. I think that that's an easier pill to swallow where this gives me clarity that this is the space that I want to be in. And when it came to pageantry, it was very clear to me that I was representative of this new age of pageantry. And 
I need to be surrounded by people in the pageant community that are ready for the new age of evolution in pageantry. It's interesting because when I went into the pageant world, I wanted to be accepted by the old school, stuck in their ways, like they are the history of pageantry community. Like we know the lady that was crowned in 1972. Like I wanted to still be loved by even those individuals, but I realized that they don't like me. <laughs> they don't want to see pageantry change. They only want to see one, a certain type of winner and a winner with a certain type of background. They don't want me to talk. They just want me to look pretty. And I wanted so heavily to be celebrated by this small pocket of pageantry and I wasn't, and it hurt. But man, if I had spent enough energy really appreciating the individuals in the community that did love me, individuals that are competing to this day and saying that Deshauna, you're the reason why I decided to compete. I'm in the technology field and, you know, I had never done a pageant before and now I'm doing it and it's opened this whole world to me. Like that's a beautiful experience to know that you're the reason why someone has decided to step into this space. And I just don't think back then, and it was eight years ago, I was young. I just don't think that I really thought heavily about that. I spoke a few weeks ago at a Women in Technology, Women's History Month event, and we talked about the rooms that lack faces that look like ours. And we talked about how important it is to go into those spaces and to be present in those spaces. I remember one woman talking about how she volunteered to take on a project. And I'm just gonna make up what her name is. Let's say her name is Maddie. One of her colleagues was like, hey, Maddie, this is not the Maddie show. And she talked about how she went out of her way to prove herself to him in particular, that she's capable of doing what she does and she's good at it. And this project is for her and she's not trying to take the attention away from other people. And I remember thinking to myself, like, we were on a panel, so this is not a moment in which I need to be not bashing anyone, but critiquing the way in which they think. But I remember thinking to myself, who cares about this guy? <laughs> He's clearly saying this isn't the Maddie show because he sees that you're getting attention for volunteering for this project that he didn't volunteer for and no one else in the room volunteered for. So who cares? In my mind, I thought to myself, I don't know why she's trying to prove herself to someone who is probably going to find a way to have a problem with anything that she does <laughs> in the workplace. And there's something, and this is why it's beautiful to call this a superpower, because there's something really powerful about being okay with people having a problem with you, <laughs> because people are always going to have a problem with you. And I think that has a lot more to do with them and what they're battling on the inside than it does with what we're battling with. I've always battled with what is your reason? That's always the question that's running through my mind when I find out that there's a person on the planet that I don't know, I don't talk to, they have an issue with me suddenly and I find out and I think to myself, well, what the heck did I do? And that question alone really does take up a lot of unnecessary time. But imagine versus asking myself, what did I do wrong? Instead, asking myself, why do I care? Why do I care? Sometimes there are just going to be run-ins with individuals that just have no positive energy for you. And I think that we have to accept that. And I'm just so grateful, gosh, because my 20s was so exhausting. I can't even tell you. My 20s were exhausting because I was so concerned about what people thought. Making sure that people like me, making sure that even, and you know what's interesting, even during Miss USA, I made sure that I didn't have any controversy, okay? <laughs> And uh, I remember the staff telling me, you're one of the first Miss USAs that didn't have a very controversial 
moment. And I thought to myself, they have no idea how intentional I've been about making sure of that because gosh, if this is the way people act when I don't have any controversy, I can't fathom what it's like when I do. Because you would think I had really been a terrible individual to win this crown. The, the, the hate that I experienced during my year, you would have really thought I had done something actually wrong. But it, nothing was done wrong. They just didn't like who I was. So I can't fathom the type of experience I would have had if I actually had something controversial happen. It would have been crazy. So I wish during my year, like if I could go back and, and redo it, I would just enjoy the good comments and not be so focused on the negative ones. And I would focus on the networks and the platforms that did want to see me versus, and did want to talk to me and did want to say positive things about me versus the ones that didn't. But it kind of just consumed me and it's very unfortunate. But once the year ended, I still felt a little bit trapped by that community. And by trapped, I mean, I still felt ridiculed by the community. And I still somewhat tailored what I did based on hoping that now that I've got a little bit more freedom and it's post Miss USA year, that okay, maybe they'll just start to see me more as a human being or maybe I'll grow on them and maybe, maybe, maybe. And that is just a heavy amount of weight to carry when you're constantly worried about what a community thinks of you. I remember I would even go into the blogs. So they have these things called void boards <laughs> and every pageant girl knows what the void board is. I don't know if it exists to this day, but back then it was really huge. And it was an anonymous chat room for pageantry commentary. And I used to go in there and you can go into the search bar and you could search anything that you wanna search and it would screen and filter down to post with the, whatever you searched in it. So if I searched Deshauna, it would filter any of the comments that had the name Deshauna in it. And for years, I used to check it every month or so because I was really curious. <laughs> I was really curious, like, what are people saying about me? What are people saying about me? And actually majority of it was pretty negative stuff. <laughs> And I remember even people in these conversations just saying, we, I don't know why you guys dislike this girl so much. Like, what is the reason? And people would just make up stuff. And I used to be sitting here like, what? How did that? I didn't do And it would be just so exhausting to try to figure out the minds of other people. I haven't checked the void board in years and I have no desire to ever check it because of the fact that I don't care about the opinions of other people, but mostly because it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. And there's a lot of comments that people will say that will sit on your spirit for an extended period of time. I remember one of the comments, which was the year that I won, someone said they just felt like I was way too thin and that my legs were way too small and they were confused. It was a very interesting comment. Why are her legs so skinny? And I just don't want us to celebrate this type of figure. And I just started looking at my body, looking at my legs, looking at my ankles, like, wow, I just didn't even think that I'm that thin. And now that I look back, I was pretty thin. I will give them that. I did look back, but I just have very fast metabolism. So there's nothing I can do about that. And quite frankly, there have been Miss USAs that have been just as thin as me. But that's just, we don't got to go down that road. But in, in truth, I don't think anyone likes criticism. I don't think that anyone likes to feel rejected or disliked by others. I just think that we have to get to a point where we are accepting that this is just a part of adulthood.
<laughs> in life, because I think we've all experienced it even when we were younger, we have to get to a point where we recognize that not every human being on the planet is going to like us. And once we're there, once we have that mindset, once we have that understanding, what do we do with it? We stray closer and closer to the ones that do love us, the ones that do appreciate us, the ones that do celebrate us. And quite frankly, we appreciate the clarity. My close friend, <laughs> I'm not going to say her name because <laughs> she's going to be watching this, but she knows who she is. She was in Washington, D.C., and she went to a birthday party with a few individuals uh, that I do not get along with and that I'm not friends with. But she was invited by one of our mutual friends. And she posted it on her Instagram story. And I remember messaging her and saying, girl, what are you doing there? What's going on? Uh, now, mind you, she doesn't know about the most this recent disconnection that I have with this group of women. She doesn't know anything about it because I don't talk about it. Just when I end friendships or I no longer I no longer bring myself to be around certain individuals, it's not really a conversation that I'm having with a bunch of people. It's just it is what it is. This is what's going on. And usually just I know about it, maybe my best friend, but I'm not telling all my friends, I don't like these girls anymore. That's not the case. It's just the friendship ends and that's the end of it. So I remember her calling me the next morning and saying, girl, I felt so uncomfortable. They were giving me very rude stares. You know, I came there for one of our other friends, you know, that she invited me just to hang out and be there at this party. But I just did not think that the energy would feel like this. And she talks about how they went to a club that night and how snarky and just mean-spirited everyone was towards her. And I'm not sure if they were like that because she's friends with me or if they were just like that because they just maybe just don't like her. But the point is after that entire situation happened and she called me on the phone, she said, I'm never going around them again, ever. But what does that do, right? When you decide I'm never going around this group ever again, that's clarity. Being disliked is clarity. It's realizing that, wow, this is awesome because now I know. And now I never have to be around these group of individuals again. I never have to deal with the energy sucking experience of being around individuals that clearly have some sort of distaste for me. Anytime I find out about a person that suddenly has a problem with me, I appreciate the clarity. So if I go to an event, I'm not confused. Do y'all ever, <laughs> do y'all ever have a situation where, which is similar to her If she needed, I needed to talk to her to tell her what probably might be the issues because they actually have an issue with me. They don't have an issue with you, but now they, now they indirectly have an issue with you because you're friends with me. <laughs> do y'all ever walk in a room and it gets quiet? And you're like, okay. <laughs> or you walk into a situation and you just didn't know that this was an issue. And you didn't know that this was an issue. And you kind of feel a little dumb because, wow, I literally had no idea. And now I'm in this very awkward and uncomfortable position. I think this system of being disliked as a superpower is a beautiful thing because not only clarity, now you can vet and screen and really intentionally decide the rooms and the spaces that you now want to be in. I have not been in a space like that in at least maybe since 2019. I think 2019 was probably the last time I was in a very awkward position and I found out that someone at this table, it was a dinner, I found out this two people at this table did not like me. Nothing happened. I haven't spoken to them in years. We don't communicate. I don't follow them on social media. They don't follow me. But I found out from another friend after the dinner that they have a problem with you. 
And I said, okay, I don't care to know why. I don't care to know the reason, but now I know so that the next time there's a dinner, there's a get together, there's a whatever, I now know that I'm not hugging and complimenting and how's your dog doing to a person that I know actually does not genuinely like me. Y'all ever feel like embarrassed when everyone is in on something and you're not in on it? You really just don't know what's going on? That's that's the type of confusion I'm in <laughs> a lot of the times. And I, I it's 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 very hard to explain. <laughs> but I kid you all not, I'm in such my own world, I can't even tell you. I'm in such oblivion because one, I just work and I go home. I haven't gotten into really big argument. Like I just really am in my own world. And when I find out that someone is like, I don't like Deshauna, I'm always like, uh, uh how? Uh? And I'm just sitting here with my glasses on, pushing my glasses into my face, like staring off into the blurry days of the world because I literally have no idea what's going on. That's how oblivious I am. And sometimes that oblivion comes in handy, but other times you're also not really catching the subliminal indicators. Like I miss all the subliminals. If you don't just say, Deshaun, I don't like you, I really just don't know because I'm really not catching the subliminal stuff that you're doing because I'm genuinely not paying attention because I genuinely don't care. So when it happens, I'm just like, how did, like, you don't remember when she, no, I don't, I don't remember that. I was in my own world, relaxing, enjoying life, like all of us should be. <laughs> so to me, I'm really embracing this superpower deeply embracing this superpower and it's because of the word power because when you care too much about who likes you and who doesn't that leaves your joy and the power over your joy in the hands of someone else this could be in the workplace this could be in a relationship this could be in a friendship this could be in the family setting we have to let that go and we have to go where we're loved. And right after this break, I'm gonna give you all the lessons. Be back in a sec. Welcome back from the break. Okay, let's give you all a few lessons about why being disliked is a superpower. One, it is a form of self-acceptance say this again, being disliked and recognizing that not everyone is going to like you and embracing it as a superpower. It is a form of acceptance, self-acceptance of who you are because you love you. And by loving you, you don't really care why others don't because you love you. You look in the mirror every day and you love what you see. And you're not interested in changing yourself for anyone. We are always going to be individuals that want to elevate and become better versions of ourselves, but we are doing that for us, not for other people. And that self-acceptance is crucial and we need it at all times. Then you want to, I said this already, but it's find your tribe. When I think about my wedding <laughs> and I think about my friend group and all the awesome women that were at my wedding that are a part of my little tight knit tribe of just 10 women, literally, that's it. Y'all can see me cheesing because I get so excited thinking about it because what we have as friends 
is so beautiful. It's irreplaceable. And the women that I invited to my wedding, that's my tribe. That's my tribe. And I wouldn't have it any other way. When you finally find your tribe, like you finally find your clique, you finally find the group of individuals that want nothing but love, support, gratitude, and respect, you have all those things encompassing in that group. When you find the tribe that offers that to you, that provides that to you, that is the consistent energy within y'all's space as a group. You have accomplished something that so many people have not. You have found gems. And that's how I feel about my friends, my group, the small 12, 10 to 12 women that I invited to my wedding. That's my tribe. And anybody that's outside of my tribe, I kind of just don't care. <laughs> I've already, I found my tribe. That's my group. That's my people. And once you find them, anyone that does not like you or is outside of that space, you kind of just start, ca stop caring because you just realize I already found my group. I don't need you lady in Timbuktu. Like, I don't need you to like me. I've got women that like me. I don't need you, lady in New York, lady in Florida, lady in DC, lady in Montana. I don't need you to like me. I've got 12 solid people that do. And they're the only ones that I care about. They're the only opinions that I care about. They're the only opinions that I respect. So I challenge you to find your group because once you do, opinions from outside the group will not matter. You already found your people. It doesn't matter what other people think. You found your people. And that's what I think was so beautiful about my wedding is I looked around and I said, wow, this is my people. These are my people. And it was a beautiful feeling to finally have accomplished true, genuine friendships and relationships. That is a beautiful thing. And it's a hard thing to find. This one is focus on your goals and passions. It's just redirect your energy and attention towards pursuing the things that you're most interested in. It's finding fulfillment. Once you get your priorities together and your priorities are, I just want to be the best version of myself. I just want to live life with nothing but joy. You start to look at all the energy that could go in other places that doesn't have to go in this place caring about what other people think and seeking validation from other people. Once you really start using other people's dislike as your superpower, you start redirecting energy. Okay, everyone, that concludes today's episode. Why being disliked is your superpower. Thank you all so much for joining me for another episode of Sour Law Sweet Lessons. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also share this show with your friends, family, colleagues, and I will see you all at the next episode. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.